Hey everybody, welcome back to Doubly Blessed Homestead. We just got through making a bunch of apple preserves. We harvested our apples last week, and uh, today I spent the day, or part of the day at least, making apple preserves, and we have a bunch of cores, skins and things left over. We've been in the habit of making our own apple cider vinegar, so I thought today I would take all the extra scraps and things that we have, make some apple cider vinegar, and show you how we do it. So as you can see, we have a bunch of these are the, the skins that we uh, got from our apples. And these are the cores. And of course, with every apple harvest, you're gonna get a few, you know, nasty ones, soft ones, you know, that have spots in it. But these all can be used. What I'm gonna do is, all the big ones I'm gonna pull out for now, because I think we have more than enough to make a batch. And uh, not everybody has them. I've got a couple of these big jars. These are big gallon jars that we have around. And uh, we're gonna just toss them in there. Toss the cores, toss the skins. What I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably end up filling this jar three quarters of the way full and uh, and then fill in the water up till it just, till it just hits the, the curve here of the jar. We'll try to put all the skins in first, so that way the cores will hold those skins down. Whenever you uh, have apple scraps, the best thing to do is uh, leave them out for a day and let them get brown. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't even take a day. Like these have only been out for an hour or so but they'll soften up and they'll turn brown, they'll oxidize. And according to all the experts online, that is what you want. We've been doing this for about a year, making our own apple cider vinegar. See, so I've got three quarters of a jar here already. I'm not gonna need to add these. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably freeze these and then the next batch that we do, we'll, uh, we'll add to the, to the mix. All right, so I've got apples in the jar. I've got some sugar here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dissolve this sugar in some water, and then I'm gonna pour the sugar water in here. I used to measure my sugar out. You know, I would do like a cup of apples and then a cup of sugar. I quit measuring. I just throw some sugar in there, and I've never had a batch not work. Um, but what I'll probably end up doing is since I have about a half gallon or a little bit more of apples, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put about four, three or four cups of sugar in some water so it dissolves and then I'll put it in here. I ended up having about three, two and a half or three cups of sugar. So I'm just dissolving that in some water. It's easier to dissolve it in the water without the apple chunks in it than trying to pour it in here and then stirring all the apple chunks and everything together to get it dissolved. Some people don't even worry about dissolving it because it dissolves over, over time. But this is how I'm doing it this time, so. Just kind of your preference. We have well water that we use to make this. City water tends to have a lot of chlorine and things in it. Uh, I would probably not use city water to make this. Uh, and I usually don't recommend using bottled water, but it's better than city water that smells and tastes like it come out of a pool. So uh, we have well water and I actually go a step further and we filter it through our Berkey water filter and that way it's pure water. We don't have to worry about the chlorine and things killing the, the enzymes that we want. All right, so I dissolve that. Try to pour it in here without making a mess. Ah, made a mess anyway, oh well. Still a little bit of sugar in the bottom. A little bit more water to that. Put a little bit more water in there. Look at me making my mess. Kind of gravy. You'd think I'd never done this before. All right, we haven't got it quite up to the little neck of the jar, just or the the curve of the jar. So we'll just add a little bit more. I don't have one yet. I'm working on getting some sort of ceramic stone that I can put in here that'll weight these apples down. You want that below that level of the, 
below the level of the water. But if you're pretty diligent every day to come in and stir it, stir it with a wooden spoon, not a metal spoon, stirring it every day, uh, and at least once every other day, if you forget, but once every day to once every other day, you stir it. You're anywhere, anywhere between 60 and 80 degrees. If it gets above 80 degrees, um, you have a hard time with the mother forming, and any time that you have below 60 degrees, you have a problem with the fermentation process. It won't, it won't start. Um, so then after it's set for about six weeks, six to eight weeks, you're gonna filter all the, uh, the big apple chunks and the apple skins out. After, at that point, I usually put it back into the jar and I let it set. Sometimes I let it set for six months, sometimes I let it set for three months. It just depends on how fast we go through the apple cider vinegar that we already have made. And I'll show you what we have made. So there's a cycle. So while this is fermenting, I'll have another batch of apple cider vinegar already made. So that while we're using one batch of vinegar, we've got another batch going. So we don't run out. And I, I eat apples all the time in my, my lunch. And so I usually always got tons of little apple cores and things in the freezer. This year we just happen to have a bunch of apples from our harvest, from our orchard rather. And so we have a, just a, an, an extra amount of apples to make an extra batch of apple cider vinegar. All right, so I'll show you what it looks like after it's set for a little while. Um, and I filtered out all the pieces. I'll show you the batch that we have and I'm just about ready to pour it in bottles and be ready for use. You can see that I keep in our cabinet, the very top, that's a half gallon jar of apple cider vinegar. You can see the mother at the bottom and that's just about ready to come out. We'll go ahead and get it out of the cabinet and I'll give you a closer look. But you can see, I, I don't go through any special uh, methods of warming it or you know, keeping it in a dark place. It's just in a cabinet here in the front of the house and it stays warm enough, stays dark enough that it works out. So here you see that I've got the apple cider vinegar and this has been setting for a while. And you know, a piece of paper towel and we get these rubber bands that you can keep on. You can get bread ties and stack them together to make it all the way around. But it goes from this gallon and, uh, and then once I filter everything out, I just put it in this half gallon. So you can see how clear it is. Now, if I usually keep this stuff in here and you can even take the mother out of here and you can actually pour it in the new batch and it'll kind of help jumpstart the new batch. And if you, have, if you have time constraints, I don't have time constraints. This half gallon will last me probably three or four months and that's plenty of time for this stuff to finish, uh, especially in the heat uh, that we have down here in Southeast Texas. So if you don't like the mother and you don't like the cloudy, you can actually filter this through a paper towel or a coffee filter or some other type of really fine filter and get it really clear like the stuff that you get in the, in the stores. So what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll empty this into old Bragg's uh, apple cider vinegar jars and then use them. I mean, it's a glass jar and it fits nicely in the cabinet. So, uh, and then wash this out and this will be ready in a couple months for when this is ready to be poured in here and finished. So when I started this, the level was probably up to here and I just basically let it set until the level gets down and it concentrates and it concentrates. So it's up to your taste. The, the longer it sets, the stronger it'll get. Make it how you like it. Uh, make several different batches. You can make smaller batches and, or make one big batch and then uh, split it up into about four or five different uh, jars and let it set. You can let one set for a month and then let one set for two months and three months and just see which one of those that you like over time and then uh, take note of that, and that's how you can do your apple cider vinegar from there on out. So now we're just gonna take this and we're gonna pour this into some of the old clean apple cider vinegar jars that you get in the store. All right, we're gonna try to do this without making another mess. Like I said, you could put a, you could put a coffee filter in here and filter it out. I don't ever do that, so we're just gonna, oh, beautiful about halfway. I'm going to shake it up, stir it up, get some of that mother going. That way this jar will have some of that mother in it. So yeah, we'll just pour it in there and it'll settle down to the bottom just like at the store. Of course, you're going to have a ton more mother in this jar than you will in the, uh, the vinegar that you get in the store. I would not recommend storing this in a mason jar with a metal lid. Um, I don't think that it's very acidic, but it may be acidic enough 
over time that it would eat through the metal. So there you have it. There's one jar, and I'll probably have enough to make another half jar of uh, apple cider vinegar. So I've got this jar, I've got a full jar in the cabinet, and then a half jar, and that'll be enough to last me a good three or four months. By that time, this will be ready, and so then I'll empty the finished apple cider vinegar into the jars that are empty, and by that time, I'll have a whole other set of uh, apple cores and peels and things from uh, just eating apples at lunch to make a whole other batch. So you can see kind of my system that I use to keep apple cider vinegar in the house. And it's cheap. I mean, you know, you're eating apples anyway. Instead of going and buying apple cider vinegar extra, just keep the cores, keep the skins or anything that you don't use or apples that go bad, stick them right into the freezer. And then after you get a, you know, a big uh, container of frozen apples in the freezer, just thaw them out overnight and then make your apple cider vinegar the next day. It's a, this is a good product, a good health habit. How awesome is it just to make your own medicine? And if you don't know the benefits of apple cider vinegar, I would really encourage you to go online, do some research, check it out.